We're ready for Coach Kerr. Name and affiliation, please. Dude, is Kelly Dubray playing tonight? Kelly's not playing. It's just lingering wrist issues from, from uh, the past dunks he's had. Sorry. I would say yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is, is, it, is it just lingering issues from the past, like landings on dunks he's had? Yeah, I guess he uh, reheard it um, at some point during the uh, during the last game a little bit, and uh, it flared up yesterday. Steve, I know at the. Uh, the Wolves record shows, but they've won four out of the last five. They're getting healthy. Um, they have their trio finally on the court playing together. Is this potentially a dangerous game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're playing really well. Uh, you know, just beat Utah uh, twice in a row. Utah's got the best record in the league, as you know. Um, Minnesota is really playing at a high level. They're playing with confidence, and uh, so this would be a very difficult game. Steve James Hill with BNC Sports uh, Championship DNA. This is another great opportunity to get a win on the road. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about uh, the mindset going into tonight's game in, in Minnesota? Well, the mindset would be that we're going to play our best defensive game of the year. You know, uh, we were thoroughly embarrassed against Dallas. Uh, did not appear to be ready uh, physically, emotionally. Uh, and we got we got trounced. So uh, it's important in this league to bounce back from bad losses. And I think our team has done that pretty much uh, this year. We've done it pretty well uh, for the most part. So I fully anticipate that we will have an edge and, and play a really, really good defensive game. And hopefully uh, that gives us a, a chance to win. Hey, Coach, it's Marnie Gellner with Timberwolves TV. Um, Steph Curry has had some monster games, and here in Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns has done the same. When you are game prepping for a team and you look at, like, what Carl has done lately, do the numbers ever strike you, or do you come to expect a level of greatness from those kinds of players where you're just like, okay, 30 a night, that, that seems about right? Yeah, I think you just kind of uh, accept the fact that guys like that are going to get their numbers. You know, um, you have to find a way to win the game despite uh, the, those those numbers happening on a regular basis. So, what does that mean? Well, it, it might mean taking trying to take somebody else out of the game. Uh, it might be uh, just limiting the easy stuff that that you know you can take care of, i.e. layups, uh, transition buckets, fouls, um, and then live with everything else. Um, but I think, especially these days, you know, this is really a, an offensive-minded era that we're in in the NBA. Guys are putting up huge numbers. Uh, the rules are skewed towards the offensive player. You have to do your very best to, uh, to try to win the game with full awareness that um, there may not be a whole lot you can do about about that player getting his his points. Hey Chris, uh, we just got the news release about uh, the injury update to to Jared and Malik, uh, specifically with Jared. Um, kind of when did this pop up? Uh, he hasn't he hasn't been on the injury report. Um, what how, how long was this kind of nagging uh, him? And and when was like the the testing done and all that that you figured out that this had to be done? Yeah, I mean. As far as the nagging, I think it's pretty much been constant since I've been here. It's something he's been trying to battle through. A lot of credit uh, to him for that. Um, and just, uh, you know, some consultations and test is testing done within the last week. Uh, and, you know, given where we are in, in the uh, season and with the urgency that we want to have in the off season and the readiness to be able to have a great summer, um, and a summer league and everything that we're building is still, you know, part of our future, a big part of our future as we see it. So we want to make sure that we give him the best chance to have the proper preparation going into next year. And it's important. Like when you think about, you know, uh, these young guys, they, they haven't really had a preparation. Of, so we wanted to get to it early. So we felt that was the time to do it now. 
And how much of just his struggles this year, especially, you know, kind of the second half of the season since you've been here, can be attributed to just he's not 100%? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're going to have to ask him that question. I think for me, it, you know, it's been been obvious. You know, it just um, it just never been able to kind of settle into a groove. He's tried. Um, looks like he's lacking a little bit of explosiveness there on a consistent basis. Um, but you know, again, I've you know I've only ever seen this version, so I think um, you know something better. You know, better. Uh, he's better able to answer. John, go ahead. Chris, we talked this morning just kind of about, you know, how you're going to evaluate players individually down the stretch here. How 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 can you evaluate what you exactly have with Jarrett, just given that you haven't really been able to to have him on the court a whole lot here under while you've been here? Yeah, John, that's a great point. I mean, this speaks to what we were just talking about. It's just, you know, having a great summer, a great summer league, and building that momentum into next season, that's, that's basically all we're left with right now, which is, the most important thing and with um with malik now is, is do you guys still would it is it fair to say that you still might have hope that he could get back on the court before the season is over where do you where do you stand that way yeah, we're hopeful for that we're, we're hopeful yeah. at the very tail end of the season that we can see him out there for a few games days go ahead yeah chris what's the cutoff where it's enough games to actually make sense to do it for Malik. Malik for coming back as yeah, like two or three games. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say it would be a handful of games. I don't know if it's two, three or four. I, that's all about when he's ready. I mean, we wouldn't do it just for the last game. I don't think that would make any many make much sense. But, you know, Malik's a competitor. I think, you know, he wants to play. He wants to be out there with his teammates. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I think psychologically he wants to go into the off season knowing that he's in game ready shape and then uh, on the injury front with like Jarrett um, we saw with D'Angelo he just didn't look the same when he was banged up earlier this year and you obviously weren't here for that but how much in your career like how much can it impact the guy when they have something like that really nagging at them and they're not really that close to 100 percent yeah I, quite significantly because obviously it impacts your performance it impacts your you know your ability to prepare properly all that's going to impact uh, impact your confidence and, you know, young players, they, you know, they're trying to figure out the league, figure out themselves in the league, and they want to be the best version of themselves. So if they're not that, it's it's a big weight to carry around. So, I mean, we see this as a really good, um, you know, initial step in a new direction with Jared. Any other questions for Coach? Yeah, Chris, you talked about, oh, you've talked about uh, wanting to see, like, the identity and establish that and, and kind of see what you have in this group. Like, how beneficial would it be for you guys to have Malik back for a few games and really kind of see close to the, really the full complement of what you have? Yeah, it would be fun. It would be really neat. It would be fun to see. You know, I mean, that, you know, over if it's you know two, three games, we get a glimpse into it. I don't know, you know, how much weight we could put to it all, but that's what we're all hoping to see. Chris, uh, in terms of just the defense, you know, you, you talk about the kind of how much energy you guys are expending and, and the really hard work you're doing at that. And it, do you think that that kind of mode is sustainable for a for a full season? Um, just in how, how would a team kind of manage through that and then still be effective offensively um, as well? Well, I mean, to, to the first point, John, uh, it's absolutely sustainable because the best teams do it. You know, they play both ends of the floor. Um, and, you know, a lot of that is just creating a foundation of uh, expectation, work rate. You have to have the fitness to go alongside of it. This is not a specific comment necessarily related to our guys because I wasn't here, but across the league in general with the very short season, like the very short off season, that kind of caught people by, uh, by surprise. There's a big section of guys in the league who probably weren't in ideal shape coming in for one reason or another, and it wasn't them being unprofessional. It was just the readiness and the ramp up wasn't there. But when we have that and then a good training camp and we can build the habits that we're talking about, play with pace, you know, then you should be able to develop the stamina to be able to make shots even though you're guarding at a high level.